or fresh baked, something that we've been talking about doing here on this channel for quite some time, ever since Genie Plus dropped and we've been trying to you know, study standby and how it's being affected by Genie Plus. One of the things that we've talked about doing is finding benchmarks. How long is the wait really from point A to point B or from point X or point Z or whatever? I'm gonna take you with me today as we're gonna do a little bit of that recon right now in the park. It is a Wednesday afternoon, about 11 o'clock, uh, but that doesn't really matter. What really matters is the size of the queue. We're gonna go check out first, right now, Pirates of the Caribbean, do a little recon there. Maybe we'll ride. Let's go, Fresh Bake. Well, there you go, guys. Pirates of the Caribbean in New Orleans Square. We're looking at a not busy queue at the moment. It is up over the, uh, the bridge, which is something. But generally speaking, when people start getting scared of Pirates of the Caribbean and how long you might have to wait, it's when, you know, it, it comes out here, it starts trailing off back towards Haunted Mansion. We don't have that today. But we can at least measure how long it takes to finish the interior part of the queue. How long it takes you to get from, you know, crossing that threshold. We could probably count or we could measure how long it takes you to go inside, which is pretty consistent. It's pretty standard. And then we could probably measure what, you know, how long it takes to do that bridge section. place to eat and talk about our results so far for Pirates of the Caribbean. I love finding reasons to come have a meal at Pelican Landing. Even if I'm not eating from Harbor Galley, you can eat. I would bring my food here from Hungry Bear, uh, from French Market. <laughs> I brought it from here. And that is the uh, French dip. I forgot, I did this mobile order and I forgot to ask for it without the horseradish. I don't like French dip with horseradish. This, the roll, feels so much bigger. This feels heavier and bigger than I, than I remember it being. I thought it was a, that's usually hardly ever the case. Usually it's, they make it smaller. It's damn good. Even with the horseradish sauce on there, which I don't mind so much, but on a French dip, I feel like it gets in the way sometimes of the, of the uh, au jus. So I, I went ahead and finished. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I was so hungry. I had to finish my sandwich before I could even start shooting. So I bring it out my handy dandy notebook. You never see me standing around in front of a queue looking all weird and stuff. You know, just watching. That's what, and I got my phone out like this. That's what I'm doing. I'm, 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 I'm doing recon on how long it takes people to get through the queue. So my mark points for this little endeavor, because the queue wasn't very long. Uh, so I can't, there's not a lot to measure. So I measured from the threshold and then from the door, well, from the threshold to the door and from the door to the boat, which you do in reverse, which I'll get to in a second. I also measured the left and right because they are different. So let's talk about that first. Uh, from the threshold to the door, generally speaking with this queue, and it's not, the, it's not a very dense queue, uh, it was about about seven or eight minutes on the left side and 11 or 12 minutes on the right side. Some were shorter, some were longer, but I would say on the high end it was 12 minutes, on the low end it was eight. The left side was seven or eight minutes for everyone that I measured. From the back of the line, you know, you know, at the, at when you, once you reach the threshold. 
that was startling to me. And you could kind of see it. You could see that there was a difference in terms of how dense the queue was and also how quickly people were being, you know, put through the queue. The right side is also, with the current configuration, the right side is longer, actually physically longer. By, I'm not even sure, maybe a minute or two longer, just in terms of the length. I don't know if I'm putting this correctly. Uh, <coughs> the, the, if you were to measure it in yards or feet or meters or whatever, it's longer. So that means you got more distance to cover, and it takes about a minute or two for that for the for the guests to cover that extra distance. So that accounts for some of that. That, that accounts for you know two of the minutes out of the four, I would say. Now I've also measured this in previous times where it was longer. It was upwards of or closer to 15 minutes to get through. That, however, the queue was significantly more dense. It was busier. It was fuller because uh, there were there were moments, there were times when the, you know just it wasn't very full and guess we're breezing through the queue at certain areas and certain aspects so i wouldn't say it's a lock that you're going to wait seven or eight minutes on the left and 10 or 12 minutes on the right it could be up to 15. Uh, and it also you know whether or not the left or the right side is longer depends entirely on the configuration because on the left side there is that stretch that goes back to the left you know behind the attraction and if the queue if the left side of the queue does get pushed back in there then that makes it the longer side but, it's hard to tell. I mean, you kind of have to do a little recon on your own when you get to the when you get to the queue to see if they're going back to the side or behind the building. Things like this, they're just not gonna. It's just not gonna go back there. But on a very busy day, it might. And, and in those cases, I think you're better off with the right side because it's gonna have the shorter uh, the shorter route to get there. Now, here's what's interesting. I took those same back of the line guests, and then I measured them when they came out of the attraction. How long did it take them, once they went through the door, how long did it take them to get all the way through to the end of the ride, including the time spent on the ride? 23 minutes. It took 23 minutes to get from the door to leaving, exiting the queue. The ride itself is marked as 16 minutes, but we're gonna add four minutes to that. I think it's 20, about 20 all in, when you factor in you know, getting on and off the boats and the time. I'm not sure where they, where they cut the time off, but there's, there's time spent in the little roundabout that could be a couple minutes that could take a while sometimes and that could factor in uh, and then there's the time spent walking back out so i'm going to call it 20 minutes which means which which does uh reconcile with it being about three minutes once you get from the door to your boat is about three minutes now here's an interesting thing to get from the door to, to the end of the ride the seeing guests exit the ride very quite a lot from the door to the exit which i was not expecting i feel i felt like that number was going to be pretty uniform pretty consistent but there are a lot of you know uh variables between getting through the door and getting to the end including how much time it takes you to get in and out of the boats how much time you spent in that little roundabout you know at the end of the ride uh that could be, you can get stuck there easily if they got a lot of boats crammed up um so that that could vary but i've seen they were doing it as quick as 23 minutes to as long as 37 minutes, 23 minutes to 37 minutes. And these are all guests that were, that were going in and through the attraction at roughly the same time, all within 20 minutes of each other. That's quite a difference, that's quite a disparity. Uh, <clears throat> and a lot of it had to do, a lot of it had to do with the left side and the right side. Uh, left side guests were getting through in either 23 minutes, 27 minutes, and 28 minutes. Those were the three that I measured. Meanwhile, guests on the right side, I had one, it took 37 minutes. One for 32 minutes and one for 30 minutes. That's what I have for the right side. I don't know what to call that. I really don't. I don't know why the right side would be so much slower. So a couple of conclusions that we can draw from this is that it's about 15 to 20 minutes once you reach the threshold, the, you know, the proper entrance to the attraction, about 15 to 20 minutes to your boat. Uh, maybe a little bit more if you're taking it. Take the left side. <laughs> Take the left side. There is some, uh, what do you call it, psychological studies done on things like that, I believe. I, I, I feel like people's general inclination is to go right in just about any given situation. Uh, you know, that, at least here in America, anyway, we're all, you know, people are generally right-handed and we drive on the right side. All you, know, you just look at any traffic pattern, it's, you know, the, the traffic flows on the right. Uh, so I, I feel like that's a natural tendency for guests to want to just gravitate to that direction. Although another theory could be that they tend to take in whatever's the nearest to them. 
So if you're coming from Adventureland, you're more likely to get in the left queue. If you're coming from New Orleans Square, you might be you know, more likely to take the right queue, given the opportunity to choose when you get to the door. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean, typically the queue extends past the threshold and you don't get to choose as you approach. You get to choose only after you've gone through the threshold. So uh, everybody is coming in from the New Orleans side, the New Orleans Square side. Everybody is getting into the threshold at the same side. And that, so the, I mean, and that's the near side, by the way. The right side is the near side. Food for thought. Now, all right. Well, we're going to put this recon to the test. We've got in the pirates put in the queue. Post the wait time when we got here was 30 minutes, and it looks like they've we kind of a switchback on top of the bridge, but no big deal. I'm expecting this to be less than 30. So there was just the one direction up there that switchback. It took us about six minutes to get down here to the threshold with where we start measuring. We're going to go left instead of right. So based on my casual observations, it's a little bit harder to do it while I'm in the queue, but I would say we're about, we were about two minutes faster on the left side than we were on the right side, which isn't a lot, but it's something if you're into that. It's going to be difficult to tell, again, once we're inside, but I can say that we have left the right lane in the dust <laughs> once we got through the once we got through the door we left the right lane in the dust As you heard, I can confirm that the left side was definitely quicker on our trip through. We got through all the way to our boats in about 20, 21 minutes. Uh, it was difficult, as I mentioned, to track how the right side was doing versus the left, but I could just kind of eyeball it. And I we definitely were ahead throughout the whole thing, both in the, uh, in, the, in the external queue out here and once we got through the doors. A few minutes on each side, I'm guessing probably five minutes we saved going on the left, on the left side versus the right. And then once you get through the doors, it's about three or four minutes on the inside. Again, give or take a minute or two, depending on if you're left or right side, as we monitored it today. And now I'm going to try to do it again. It's like, uh, it's three o'clock. It's about three hours later. Uh, so, that, you know, the, the crowd, it's a little more, it feels a little more dense right now, a little more busy than it was at noon. Uh, this queue, especially right here, that was much less full than it is right now. Uh, or full, it's fuller now than it was before. See this queue right there? I just realized it's like Fast Pass for Pirates, but not Fast Pass. It's 
for uh, you know, disability access or people who have some kind of, you get a green pass, they give it to you. It's special access. The left side is having to incorporate those guests into their queue and it's still faster than the right side. Right there you can see there's a cast member holding the left side up if they've got anybody coming in on the uh, express lane, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Then they hold that, they hold the line up for a minute, let the express lane through, and then they ship a bunch of guests here on standby. Well, I've watched a couple more cycles. Left side is still kicking the snot out of the right side. The only time it ever gets even or close to even is when the left side does have, right here, we got a couple, uh, you know, express lane guests that, that slow things down a bit, but, uh, you know, all things being equal, left side is definitely, by, by three or four minutes, by three or four minutes, uh, which is fascinating considering the, the small distance that these guys have to travel. It's a, it's a factor of just more people getting in the right side and then having a, a slightly longer queue to navigate. And then you've got Red up there holding the court. Meanwhile, for the first time today, the queue has finally extended outside of the, uh, the lone switchback they hear on the bridge. It has grown and pushed out into the, uh, the main New Orleans Square walkway here. It's not going all the way back to Haunted Mansion yet. This is, I guess the back of the line is, yeah, right about here. Now the question would be, what I would want to know is, like th at this point, how, how long is that switchback right there? And just like that, they cycled all those guests. <laughs> that extended queue is no longer going out into Tiburon Orleans Square on its way to Haunted Mansion. It's back to its normal switchback up there on the bridge. That took uh, just a few minutes to cycle those guests. Six minutes. It takes... <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this fresh bit. <laughs> I am. I could do this for hours and hours and hours. Six minutes. That switchback up there to go up and back and then to the threshold is six, is six minutes. So with that information, let's have some fun with this. Let's imagine that the queue did extend out here into this extended queue where these ropes are right now. That, that queue is maybe twice as long. I would say it's maybe two times that. So if we can extrapolate that, that's 12 minutes here, plus the six minutes, that's 18 minutes to the threshold, plus another 20 to your vehicle. So uh, that's 38 minutes. If you're all the way out here, halfway to Haunted Mansion, I say all that because uh, I'm here to tell you that when, when Pirate says it's 45 minutes, it usually isn't, even on the worst of days, it's not 45 minutes. And if it is, it's at least the kind of queue that you keep moving. I should note at this point that one of the, uh, one of the reasons why we're, we're starting this reconnaissance of you know, benchmarks on a ride like Pirates is because this works best on attractions that don't have Lightning Lane. Uh, lightning Lane puts everything, it just it skewers things, it skewers your ability to properly measure time in standby because it, it, how many people are in Lightning Lane varies so wildly. There could be none, there could be a hundred. And if it's a hundred, that puts a complete stop to standby. If there's none, then standby breezes through. So, you know, your mileage may vary. So if we go to a lightning lane attraction and start measuring how long it takes from a certain point, I, I, it could be different for you on the time that you visit. Having said that, I've got time for one more of these today. Some of it anyway, and we're going to Indiana Jones. It's curious the sense of dread that I feel sometimes when I approach the Indiana Jones queue, just in terms of the wait time and how, how bad is it gonna be today? Uh, what you're looking at right here is lightning lane. It looks like they're doing okay business. Uh, people are just kind of walking on, but that's not what we're going to be looking at. We're going to take this path down here to watch guests from the exit. Hey, how are you? If you guys can see, I, I got to change my light. And really there's kind of, there's maybe two points where you can start measuring Indiana Jones. Obviously from the entrance, the threshold, you get in here from there to this threat, to the interior threshold, to you know the tomb or the cave or whatever you want to call this. Uh, that's the point where you, you stop measuring and we, we can't watch it from, from the exterior. I will say right away that uh, we're not going to be able to measure the back of the queue 
the, the entrance to to the uh, second threshold because the the queue is not full. So we got to find you know a midpoint, a secondary benchmark. So we're gonna be measuring from these two snakes. But while I stand here and watch these two snakes, we have a great view of what's happening with Lightning Lane presently. All you see right now are standby. There's nobody in the Lightning Lane queue. So as soon as room opens up, there's a monitor. Is this cast member to the left of that bamboo tree there as a monitor, and he can watch and see how many, uh, how you know, how far back the guests are. As soon as there's enough room in the queue, he can release more guests into the queue. So they're they're watching that. And as soon as they have room to send more guests, oh look at that. See now look, he's not stopping anybody any of the lightning lanes. There are a whole mess of lightning lanes coming through right now. Just had a laugh out loud moment off camera while I was sitting there. I, I, things are going so well for standby right now that I can't measure the darn uh, snakes because there's not enough guests coming into standby and they're getting through so many because there's so few people coming through lightning lane that now that's the back of the line. I have no, I have no benchmark. I need another benchmark. Maybe one of those obelisks. I don't know, man. That's what I get for trying to do benchmarks at Indiana Jones. Didn't even get into it hardly, and the ride went down already. So I have to go find a new study. Perhaps we'll do it next door, Jungle Cruise. So when you come to Adventureland and Jungle Cruise, what are you looking at? What are you using as your barometer for whether or not it's busy? Is it just the post of wait time of 40 minutes? Or do you look at, you know, this benchmark right here? The door is open. There's nobody inside the first little section of the interior queue. They don't start accumulating until you get to right about where those windows are right there. You can also look up here and you can see guests on the second floor. An even worse sign is guests in the second half, the second exterior queue. They keep this closed often. This is often not open. Typically, they're only using this half of the upper queue. So my goal here is to find a couple of different observable spots where you can say it's going to take you this long from, let's say, this little corner right there. <laughs> That's the goal, right? Now, one case I'll make up front about not using the, the entrance, the threshold to begin measuring is because it never tells the truth. Upstairs, the queue is very full, but downstairs, it's empty. The door, you know, it doesn't reach the door and it's empty down here in this first this first exterior or interior queue. It's also empty going all the way into the queue and up to the stairs. You don't start meeting guests. Heck, I could go all the way up the stairs right now. Look at that. The stairs are empty, but both decks are full upstairs. Meanwhile, this is where things get really confusing. Meanwhile, it could be the case where the entire bottom floor is full. This little section right here could be full, but it still could be quicker than it is right now, the 40 minutes, because they haven't filled up either of the top two sections upstairs. If it's just downstairs, it's a breeze. It could be full down here, not full up there. That's why when you want it, when you are looking to see if Jungle Cruise is rideable, start with how things look upstairs. Look at, look at that. That's the top floor right now. It is completely a walk-on. It was wall-to-wall -wall guests just a few minutes ago. I can't even see any guests other than the ones that are just kind of breezing through. Well, top deck is full there. And there's a bunch of guests over here too. So curious that, you know, what my guess is, is that people have stopped getting into the Jungle Q's queue for a while. So the top floors are still full, but uh, they're, not, they're not filling in the back end. Seeing guests on the left side of the Jungle Cruise sign, not so bad. Seeing guests on the right side of the Jungle Cruise sign, bad. Although if I'm looking at these guests right now, I, it's, I think those are the only, that's actually the back of the queue right there. Yes, now it's empty. As we speak, we just watched them empty the back of that queue, which, which reconciles what we were seeing with uh, you know, nobody in the, in the lower queue and nobody up top. It, would, it, it makes sense that this, this would empty you know, in a reasonable enough time. The way you approach eyeballing the Jungle Cruise queue is in sections. Each section, there's three. There's the lower section, the top section that includes the, the part just after the stairs, and this extended queue right here. And then there's the back section to the right of the Jungle Cruise sign. There you go. 
each one has a typical wait time attached to it. The lower queue, if it's full, I mean, not necessarily all the way to the door, but if they're generally in this area right here, you're looking at 10 minutes downstairs. The first half of the upstairs queue, this part here where the stairs are, and the left half of the upstairs queue that's covered. You know, if you, if you use the Jungle Cruise entrance as your divider, that's 20 minutes. This plus that is probably 20 minutes. And that is generally where your queue is gonna be. Jungle Cruise most typically rests in that area, in the upper queue up there. It doesn't very often go into the second part, but if it does, that's another 10 minutes back there. So on the outside, you're looking at, if you're using all three queues, you're looking at something in the ballpark of 45 minutes. If they're doing the, the if the bottom is full and the top is full up here, you're looking at 30, 35 minutes give or take your mileage may vary like i said it just depends on how full things are in each section look at here right this queue is going out the door right now but it's not longer than it was when, when it was empty down there because hey guys because that other rear queue back there is not being used you have to kind of put them all together and do the mental math on that but these guests right here are probably going to wind up waiting 35 minutes let's put that to the test And when you do decide to jump into the Jungle Cruise queue and you make your way through the lower section and up the stairs, at the top of those stairs, the queue splits in half, just like Pirates of the Caribbean. Just like Pirates of the Caribbean, take the left. The general inclination is for people to take the right. Also, the general inclination is to follow what other people are doing. So even though it's, you can see a bunch of people in the right-hand queue sometimes, not in this case, still take the left-hand queue. It is open. They are always running two sides. They are never running just one side. So take the left side. I don't have any data to back that up today, but that's just something that I've observed over 10 years of coming to Disneyland. The way as for that wait time, 25 minutes. Easy peasy. Well, with Jungle Cruise done, we've got a little bit of time left in our evening to give another shot at Indiana Jones watching this queue. They're back open again. Let's see how things look. You know, I believe I've measured this queue once before when it was about in the condition that it is today. Still not all the way full, but mostly full. I'd say about 85%. I measured this at about 20 minutes, though it was later in the evening, and there were... Oh, thank you very much, thank you. I, I think we're gonna have a harder time of it right now than I do. This is kind of slow going right now because it closed for a little while, and whenever that happens, you can expect an influx of Lightning Lane to come jump in there and take advantage, and they're all gonna get priority. So this single, or this standby line might go a little bit slower than it might. I think I measured it once before at about 20 minutes. This feels like it's gonna be closer to 30. Also, I'm not gonna bother measuring any of the time spent inside the, you know, in the queue, in the interior queue. That's after the mix point. That's after you blend it in with, uh, with Lightning Lane. Everybody's together uh, and it's pretty much always the same. I mean, there, it can vary from, from time to time, but you're gonna expect a half an hour inside the queue. It it's really bad. I mean, it, gosh, you know, it depends on you gotta walk through but it, generally you're gonna walk all the way through to the dig site where you know the guy's screaming and you shake the rope, that kind of thing. Usually you walk all the way through into that. That whole thing is about a half an hour. So you can add 30 minutes to whatever the wait time out here in this queue, be that 20 or 30 minutes. The posted wait time, by the way, right now is 65. Why does anybody ever get into the Indiana Jones queue? I, <laughs> again, before I could even really get into the meat of measuring things, they just announced that the ride went down. You could see people breaking out of the queue. So I couldn't even measure the back of the line to, I didn't even have time to measure the back of the line to, to the threshold here to get to the interior queue. One thing I did know, I felt, cause it was weird. I'm sitting there like, nobody's moving. There's nobody in the lightning lane queue and the, and the standby queue wasn't moving. And I'm like, something feels unwrong or unright. Anyway. The one thing I was able to measure is uh, the time it takes to get from 
the snakes to this nearest obelisk, the obelisk furthest towards or furthest to or nearest to the uh, the ramp and nearest to us, this near obelisk right here. It takes about 15 minutes when the, when the queue is dense like it was before to get from those snakes and you do a bunch of you do a bunch of switchbacks to this point it's 15 minutes and then I would say it's probably because I have to stop now because I can't stay here all night I'm gonna guess 10 minutes to the ramp and another 10 minutes up the ramp so what was that that's I just said 35 minutes right here that's actually too long I think 35 minutes seems too high even on a bad day I don't think it takes 30 or 35 minutes well maybe not, not 35 yeah, say hi. Hi. Follow you on TikTok. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. I, I still say 30 minutes. It was it was specifically dense. Bad time. We have to come back and do this later. But that's gonna have to be it for today's adventure. This Wednesday afternoon adventure at Disneyland, testing benchmarks, testing standby wait times, trying to figure out how long the waits really are. How long are they really? You don't have to guess because I got you covered, Fresh Bake. And I'm gonna do, we're, we're gonna be archiving this and doing more of this later. We'll be doing all distractions. We're gonna try to do the lightning lanes as well, although it works a lot better, as I said before, it works a lot better with standby attractions. And then you can look for this to be posted up on our website as well, because I'm gonna, it's a little easier to digest that kind of information on the web than it is on a video. <laughs> I just walked out into Main Street and in the hub and listened to me. I feel like I've been in a dungeon for about six hours and I just crept back out in the real world out here. There's sunlight and <laughs> I've been stuck in Adventure Life for the past couple hours and it's really covered and you're like removed from society back there. But look, it's Main Street, Disneyland. Ha <laughs> ha, very happy. Just like me, your host, a fresh pig, David Erickson, the Duke of Dork. I'm a happy guy. It, it, it doesn't hurt that I'm at Disneyland either. <laughs> but that's it for our show tonight. Uh, I've got to get home. We're going to party tonight, Fresh Bake. We're going to let our hair down a little bit. Uh, but do actually, now that I mentioned that, check out the Royal Dorks. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a video today that may be part of an ongoing series on, on the Royal Dorks. Kind of a behind the scenes type stuff. I, I vlogged a little bit of my day leading up to this morning, and I'll be vlogging a little bit after this. You know, the results of this trip. If you're interested in some behind the scenes stuff, go to the Royal Dorks. Find me there. Yeah. Enjoying myself some more. <laughs> I have a lot of fun making videos. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Follow us on Royal Dorks on YouTube, but also on Instagram at underscore Fresh Bake. And on Twitter at Fresh Bake Disney, that's Fresh with no E. And on TikTok at Fresh Bake Disney. We also have a website, FreshBakeDisney.com, where we're posting articles again. I am a hard working dude. I am putting out a content, or I'm a content machine these days. Uh, let's hope I can keep it going, because I'm having so much fun doing this stuff. But thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. If you had a chance and you want to show your support, you can join our Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash freshbaked. You can find videos from Liz. Look, either Liz or me are in the park almost every single day now. Liz is here. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, Liz is here doing a lot of recon for me now. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you don't see the Dorks videos anymore. Why she stopped doing some other stuff. Because she's doing recon. She's helping out Fresh Baked Barbara. She's, uh, you know, some of the news updates that we've been getting have been coming from her. She's also posting videos to Patreon. Liz does some little, you know, short vlogs from the park and she posts those to Patreon. So if you can, you know, if you want more of that, more of Liz, follow us there. I am really rambling. This is the longest outro in the history of everything. Thanks for watching, Fresh Baked. I love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh Baked.